Aha, dinky do, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our global talk show for tonight. A 50-second global talk show. How amazing is that? Send me all your thumbs up and all your hearts and all the rest of it because we're here live for one hour, one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment for not just one nation, but for all nations throughout the world. Nation shall speak peace unto nation. I'm Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and of course, an ambassador for creative and cultural programming live here on Facebook Live. Welcome, 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 I say, of course, to our one hour. Uh, Shani Brown's here. Scotty, Dinky Doo, Robert and Albert, Robert Devlin, Dinky Doo to you, sir. Good evening, Scotty, says Andrew Mackay. John Hanlon, hi, Scotty. Alfred James Wright, Dinky Doo, Scotty. Welcome to all of you. Fantastic stuff. Good evening, Scotty. Dinky Doo, says Danielle McFarlane. Now, we have so much to talk about tonight. If you're talking about a United Kingdom subject, then I would like to mention Brexit. The question I'm asking you tonight is, do you genuinely believe that Brexit is on the way out? Do you think it's been kicked into the long grass just to fizzle out into nothing? Tell me what you reckon there. And, uh, of course, you know, Facebook Live, sharing, sharing, sharing all the time on the World's Top Talk Show. Uh, good evening, sir, says Neil James Mills. Alberta says Dinky Doo, says Robert Devlin. One Scotty boy, how's it going? All right, Scotty. Dinky Doo, says Ron Stewart. Jim McMillan. Hi, Scotty. Adrienne Murphy. Hey, Scotty. Lovely to have you with us. And, of course, guys, get these numbers up big style. Um, Darren Kelly, Ron Stewart saying to Darren Kelly to be watching Scotty McClure. And remember to say, has the fox been back? Says Stee. Stee, the uh, fox is always around and comes to within four foot of me when I'm with the dog and six inches of me when I am not with the dog. So there you are. Sonny Rajput says hi. Dinky do, Sonny. Lovely to have you with us. Sandy Howden, Scotty, we are out. Good try, though. I don't think we are, Sandy, because um, Article 50 could be rescinded at any time for, I think, the next year and a half. Certainly the next year. So we're not necessarily out, Sandy. Good try. There we go. Good evening, Scotty. This is Alex Robertson, one of our very fine actors. Dinky-doo, Alex Robertson. Marvellous, I say, to have you with us. Ben Fosakhali. Good evening, Scotty. Dinky-doo, Ben. Lovely to have you. Um, I, the Silver Fox, Scotty boy. Aha. I use a dye called Silver Fox to make me look older and more distinguished, of course, because my hair is actually jet black. Sometimes the roots start to darken. And I think it's time for a bit more of my silver fox. Aha, there you are, Scotty, dinky-doo. And all that nonsense, says Dino the dog. All that nonsense to you, Dino the dog. Lovely to have you with us, of course. Cheered, 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 cheered. And cheered again, big chap, says Neil James Mills. Neil James Mills, thank you. I thank you. That's tremendous, because let's get the numbers up, guys. We're 52 shows in. So there you are. That's not bad. And that's actually over a year's work, because... The first one, I think, was late September. You'll see it's show number one. And I'd like you to tell me if you think the show has evolved and if you like the way it has evolved. Also, should we change the timing of the program? Would you like to see the show earlier in the day? So there you are. Uh, I think we're well and truly out of Brexit, Scotty. Maybe not a bad thing, all things considered. I think it might be disastrous, all things considered. Shared, 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 and shared again. Uh, you Muslims, says Sonny Rajput. Um, all I can say to you, Sonny, is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So there we are. Uh, from a Scottish perspective, it's disastrous, says Martin Machosterfjach. Ah, uh, yes, I, Martin Machosterfjach. Absolutely. So there you are. Yes, I think it would be absolutely disastrous. It didn't used to be, because when we had fishing and farming, ag and fish in Scotland and under Scottish control and all these big ports, all the Fife ports, all the boat builders, all up the west coast, the wonderful stuff, Oban and Ullapool and Tarbot and Campbelltown, all the fishing. But the fishing seems to have settled down now. So I think coming out of Europe would be a disaster. 
and it will cost billions and billions and billions. Remember that um, that referendum was really only advisory to the government. Okay, you donkey, says Gerard Graham. Okay, you donkey. So there we are. I like donkeys, so I uh, take that as a compliment. Oh, Jeremy Corbyn, says Alfred James Wright. Yes, indeed. Um, you're so nice. You smile nice, says Sonny Rajput. I thank you, Sonny Rajput. I'm sure you are extremely nice yourself. Why is there a close-up of your mush? Back off at least a mile, says John Cummings. No, John Cummings. Uh, my mush is there. If you've got a problem with that, that's your problem, John Cummings. But I do understand, you know, but there it goes. Leaving the EU would be a disaster, says Ben Fasakale. The EU nationals that live here have been through hell since that vote, which, let's be honest, was based upon nothing but lies. So there you are. As far as Ben Fasakale's concerned, it was just a pack of lies. So there you are. Hey, Scotty, has still game been in touch yet? No, Kerry Duncan, they haven't, but it would be lovely. I'd love to do something on still game. Just a wee part. Maybe McClue pops into the clans and goes, Hang hey, on, Bobby. Are you okay? Can I ask Bobby, see this pair here? Yes, while I've got my wallet out. Could you get them? Nothing! So there we are, something like that. I respect your opinion, Scotty. We enjoyed the EU during our time in, but the time has come to become the UK again. Well, Jim McMillan, the UK, of course, is just a unification of four fabulous countries, and I think Scotland will definitely be dropping out very, very soon. So the UK is going to be much smaller. And uh, if Ireland was unified, so you had a united Ireland, then it becomes smaller again. And Wales does its own thing anyway, so it becomes smaller again. The north of England, I think, would like to be under Scottish governance, so it becomes smaller again. So you're really just left with London and the south east. Now, Mrs Thatcher, as it stripped the rest of the country to take the money into London to make it a major international finance centre and a major international city, of course. So a lot of money is owed to the rest of the country from these assets that were stripped out, the steel, the coal, the shipbuilding, the shipping, the ports, all that sort of thing. So there we are. So money needs to be coming back out from London. Scotty, the new Victoria programme on STV was factually incorrect in a scene where the statement in the House appealed for England to be saved from the Corn Laws. Uh, the repeal of the Corn Laws was 1841, and you would be talking about Sir Robert Peel. So there you are. So that's it. That's what I can tell you there. So tell me what you think the factual inaccuracy is, and I will see if I can tidy that up for you. Remember, I am a great period director of drama. So there you are. I've directed a number of period dramas. And of course, your details have to be extremely accurate for that. Good evening, Scotty, from South Yorkshire, and Andrew Spaxman. Hi, South Yorkshire. Dinky do, fantastic. Behave, Scotty, says Sandy Howden. It'll be the start of a new chapter. I just missed that. It'll be the start of a new chapter. Um, what was that one? In Scotland, in Europe, they can't stop us Scots trading like they did at the Darien Adventure. Well, the Darien Adventure, of course, out in uh, South America there, bit of a shambles, that. Um, but the Bank of Scotland, William Patterson, yes, indeed, uh, in the 1690s, the Darien scheme, or Darien scheme. But um, no, I think what's happened is Scotland's traded with Europe for a thousand years and will continue to do so. So what I would suggest is that we um, leave England. If England wants to stay uh, coming out of Europe, Scotland stays in Europe. And Scotland does all the trading for the UK through Scotland, via Scotland. We can become a major, major trading centre. I've always had a bit of a dream, admittedly, but I'd like the likes of Greenock to be the financial capital of the world. I can see it. Fantastic, because uh, a tremendous town, beautiful housing, geographically superb, sitting right at the edge of all the oil reserves. Marvellous. So they are. Christopher James Map. Uh, he's very rude. I think we'll bin you, Christopher James Map. actually. I don't think we want somebody that goes on like that. So we will block you. There we are. He's gone. Right, we'll never hear from Christopher James again because he's been rude. Am I absolutely delighted you're able to pronounce that, Scotty? I'm an HGV driver who delivers our fish to Europe 
Martin McCostelich. Yes, absolutely. There we are. Um, education. Uh, so there we are. I hate this politics stuff, Scotty. Well, you see, a lot of people are saying, can we have more politics, Scotty? We like to discuss it. But we can discuss anything. Angie Thompson, the Corn Laws, etc. You can now buy mitts for a pound in Quitland, says Dino the Doug. Are you sure it's not um, a quid? In <laughs> What have you directed, Scotty? Says Kerry Duncan. Ah, all sorts of uh, Victorian period pieces, Kerry. So there you are. Very big on that. Very big on the melodrama. Yes. Uh, evening, Angie, says Ron Stewart. Uh, any news on Catalonia, says Stair? Lol, says Kerry Duncan. I actually directed Waiting for Godot for television. So there you are and was told uh, by the director you are using, it's told by the producer you are using real television shots. So there you are. I like that. You're using real television shots. We had um, Vladimir and Estragon's boots and we had the camera right in the boots. So you can see the condition of the boots and everything like that. So there we are. Marvellous stuff. Um, Ian Walker just coming up here. Let's get this good. Hi, hi. Uh, Europe is disintegrating before our eyes. Spain, Germany, Poland, Austria, France. The bad old days are coming back. Conflicts, says Ian Walker. Well, we want to avoid that. So I think we should all stay united. I mean, you can see the language hardening, the Brexit language hardening. So there we are. And we do need to have it professionally handled. So there you go. I think what we'll end up with uh, if we do go ahead with Brexit, and remember, we could rescind Article 50 at any time. And we could look at the referendum as purely advisory from the government's point of view. So we could calm the beans right away. Um, uh, evening, Angie. Evening. Absolutely. Marvellous stuff. So there you are. That's what we're talking about. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are, of course, live. This is the World's Top Talk Show. We're on Facebook Live, one of the World's Top broadcast platforms. I am the World's Top broadcaster. I am also First Lord of the Internet and a creative and cultural ambassador for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Welcome, 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 I say. Excellent to have you all with us. Share and share and share and share this broadcast at any time at all. In fact, I'm just looking if we've got a share point coming up. Yes, we have. We have a share point coming up, guys. So if you want to all start sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing as quick as you possibly can, that would be fantastic. Clever idea, says Christopher James. So there you are. Yes, you've gone, Christopher. So there we are. What we might do... We might bring you back at some point if you can behave. Is that why we have universities in the world's top ten? Stop reading the Daily Rancid and educate yourself, Alfred, says Ben Fazakali. Well, I think what they call mainstream media, Scotty McClure, is really now mainstream media because I'm giving you facts. I'm doing what the newspapers and the television stations and the radio stations used to do years ago. I'm giving you straight news. So there we are, fantastic stuff, and a lot of facts. So there's no agenda here, there's no bias or anything like that. We tell it like it is on the Scotty McClure Show. So what was mainstream media, your newspapers, they're losing their grip because they've done so much bias and uh, people are not idiots that they've looked at and said, that's just plain wrong. So when you'll find that the Scottish leader Nicola Sturgeon has been attacked in um, southern based mainstream media, it has the opposite effect to what the media moguls think it will have instead of decrying Nicola Sturgeon and the Scottish National Party, it just hardens attitudes for Nicola Sturgeon and the Scottish National Party. For um, Alex Salmond and all the work that he did over the years for the people of Scotland, for an independent, economically independent Scotland. It just hardens attitudes. So there you are. Is that why we have universities in the world's top 10? Stop reading the Daily Rancid. Yes, that's right. Uh, Scottish universities. Remember, Scotland had four universities when England had two. So there we are. So Scotland has always been ahead of the game. And also, two of the Oxford colleges that you will see, um, Oriel College, so there you are, and Balliol College are Scottish colleges 
essentially in their founding. Uh, excellent stuff. Um, is that such a bad thing? Whilst I'm an SNP supporter, Scotty, do we really want to be governed by a government we didn't vote for? Um, that uh, I believe that's something we can do for us. Well, Jim McMillan, uh, you will find that it's not just the SNP, although they are catalytic in wanting um, independence. It's not just the SNP who want independence. There are Tories who want independence. There are Labour people who want independence. There are Liberals who want independence. There are a huge cross-section of Scottish people who have wakened up. They used to trust the old parties. The old parties did one on them, and they thought, right, um, you know, we're not having that again, so now the trust is growing for independence. And um, regardless of what mainstream media has been telling you, nobody is sick of hearing about independence. Nobody is sick of the idea of independence. Nobody is against another um, independence referendum. If that's what the government want to do, it's not a problem. It's a tick in a box, okay? So why would anybody be sick of that? So don't listen to that. Uh, we got our hearts bus windows smashed coming out of Greenock, says Sandy Howden. Oh, Sandy, what were you doing? Were you being rude to the local populace? So there you are. You'll need to go back and apologise and uh, get them to pay for the windy. I hate this politics stuff. It's just not my thing, says Kerry Duncan. Kerry, watch and learn. Watch and learn. Because remember, I'm no political animal. But I do tell it like it is. Neil James Mills, of course. Excellent to hear from him again. There we are. That's what we like. Dinky do, Scotty. Right, let's get this moving on. I can't hear you, Scotty, says Ian Walker. Well, you must have a problem, Ian. Get that sorted. Hi, where are you from? Says Sherya Sher Khan. I am from the universe, Sherya, and uh, I am a universalist. So there you are. So I can be from anywhere you like. Not a problem. Uh, Alfie was in the bus too. Hey, Scotty, remember the old days and the single mothers? I do, absolutely. And you have a great hat, says Ivan Plomp. Yes, thank you, Ivan Plomp. Uh, my hat is very much part of my accoutrement. Um, hey, Scotty, how come you know so much? What you don't know is not worth knowing. Dinky-doo. I do, I do, I do, says Macher Peveral. Peveral, I say thank you, Macher. Lovely to have you with us, Scotty. Uh, my neighbour was uh, acting on porridge. Uh, she played Officer Miller the other night. Fantastic, Ian. We love that. That's what we like. Keep up the good work, my friends, says Joseph Gibbons. Joseph, this is just a chat show for ordinary people. And what I would like to see is one of the big radio stations or one of the big television stations pick this show up because we're needing a lot more of this. We have a huge epidemic of loneliness. We have politicians making speeches and nobody's interested because they're not in touch. We don't have the phone in, so they can't take the temperature of the nation. If you'd had the Scotty McClue National Mighty Megaphone in running during all these referenda, then what you'd have found, you'd have had an idea. You wouldn't even have had to call a general election because you would have known what the people were thinking because you would have said, I listen to Scotty McClue every night. So there we are. That's what we need. And uh, if you want to get one of these petitions up, get over 100,000 signatures, can we have the Scotty McClue show on national radio or television pronto? Get signing everybody and let's do it. So there we go. Excellent stuff. Dinky do, Scotty, says Scott Beedy. Excellent. Scotty, how long do you think it'll be before another? I'm just moving this up, guys. This is, seems to have frozen a little bit. Um, hi, Scotty. Good to see you. Uh, Scotty, would you rather fight a huge thousand foot chicken? Or 1,000 tiny chickens, says Johnny M. Linney. I wouldn't fight the chickens. I love the chickens. They're beautiful. So there we are. Um, I once got some chickens, um, little day-old chicks. They were gorgeous. And I got them because they were going cheap. Um, now, who else have we got? The lingo language of Brexit is a total failure, says Michael McGuigan. Well, that's because people don't know what they are doing. They don't know what they're talking about. They're stuck with all this 
stereotypical stuff and xenophobic stuff and stuff that's out of date years ago. So the whole thing's out of date before you even touch it. All right? Excuse me one second. There we are. Oh, just giving myself a wee mop down because it's very, very hot in the studio tonight. Roasting hot outside uh, at the moment. Uh, voting is rigged, Scotty. Did you eat the chicks, Scotty? No, I did not. How dare you? Uh, the lingo language of Brexit, yes. Uh, total failure. Stair says, Nicola Sturgeon. Um, uh, very good. You'd fit right in to still game, Scotty, says Alex Robertson. Thank you, Alex. Did you like my little joke there that I made up? Freedom, says Pete Gallagher. Pete, that's lovely and it's great, but there's an awful lot more to an independent Scotland than shouting freedom, right? We're not going back to the days of Bannockburn. We're not going back 710 years years well so what is it now 714 years we're not going back to that 713 years still we're not going back to all that sort of stuff the new scotland the new enlightenment is a very 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 sophisticated place and a very equable place beautifully run i think when i look at the whole political spectrum in the united kingdom people would love if uh, nicola sturgeon and the scottish government were in downing street running the whole show. I think that would be fabulous. They are just a thought. They were, but as I say, I'm not a political animal. Do we want to be the Labour Tories or any other party? No, I don't think it's anything to do with party politics. The independence of Scotland is purely economic. So don't get hung up on anything but the money. Follow the money, all right? Had Scotland not been worth billions and billions and billions in subsidising the rest of the UK, we'd have been let go years ago, because that's what's happened to all the other colonies. Right, anyway, enough of that. But uh, just to let you know, Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmond uh, are in two, are two different camps in the SNP, Scotty. So Sandy Howden, Sandy, I'm not getting hung up on all that minutiae, right? I'm a big picture person. I paint in broad brush strokes. I want what is best for the majority of the people. Remember, people are always pushing towards their own personal interests. If there's money to be made out of stuff, you'll see a different recipe. Uh, so there you go. Scotty, what about the new law that you can't turn up at a hospital before seeing your doctor? It takes four days to see a doctor unless you're in Kirkcaldy. Uh, and you can see the witch doctor any time. <laughs> the Lang tune. The Fifers will be after you, Ian Walker. And you have to sup with a Lang spoon when you're supping with the Fifers. Forgive me, folks. I'm just having a quick uh, cup of tea. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. That's. Do you like the cup? Of course, you might be seeing it backwards. But it says, seize the day. Carpe deum. Carpe deum. There we are. Right, Kerry Duncan, Scott. Yes, Kerry Duncan, yes, we've got that. Absolutely, we can see that. Now, the whole thing about the doctor, you've got to remember that the National Health Service has become a bit of a business since 1948. So it's metamorphosed in the last 70 years. The National Health Service in for 70 years. Fantastic setup. So there we go. But medicine's changing. The next round of medicine, allopathic medicine, is changing dramatically. The days when they put leeches on you or opened a vein or even cut a leg off or what have you, like in the Crimea and, and what have you. So most of the 20th century allopathic medicine didn't change dramatically, but I think genetics is the way ahead. Absolutely. And of course, what we've got to watch is antibiotics. We're very grateful to Sir Alexander Fleming, another Scot, for, of course, noticing what was growing in his Petri dish in his lab. I always thought history of medicine could have been different if Alexander Fleming had gone away for a holiday and come back and maybe the cleaner at the lab had said, oh, Mr. Fleming, uh, I just washed up all your dishes. Some of them were quite dirty. There was a wee bit of muck in one of them. So I just gave it a good sign out. That sort of thing. It would have changed the whole of history. Uh, excellent stuff. So there we are. So the new law about seeing doctors. Um, I always remember when my late mother passed away, uh, the doorbell rang when I was uh, making funeral arrangements, and uh, it was the doctor. 
And I said, I'm sorry, doctor, but she actually passed away the other day. So there you are. So that was that. Um, under a bit of pressure, the the old NHS in a lot of places. But uh, but medicine, allopathic medicine is changing. Homeopathic medicine, don't uh, dismiss that as mumbo jumbo because uh, all it means that a lot of our cures come from our plants. If you get a nettle sting and uh, it inflames, then what do you put on it? You put dock, which is growing beside the nettle. I rest my case, quod erat demonstrandum, QED, little bit of Latin for you. Um, Dinky do, Scott, this is Lewis Cunningham. Lovely to have you with us. Scott E. says, Kerry Duncan, thank you. Uh, Makia Pavro, hey, Scotty, remember the old days of the single mother? Yes, we do. Classy bonnet, Scotty. Hopefully the next referendum won't be rigged, Scotty. Keep up the good work, says Stephen Buck McDowell. Stephen Buck McDowell, there's no proof of any of that stuff, but I think people were voting totally misinformed on the old crest of the wave with a lot of sort of um, enthusiastic and uh, charismatic politicians and go, oh, that'd be great. Are we from Europe and then we can do our own thing and then, woo hoo, -hoo wakey wakey. Alfred James Wright, the best part of Greenock is the M8 to Edinburgh. Alfred James Wright, you obviously don't know Greenock well, stunning part of the world. And um, I can remember when I was in Greenock, there was a population of about 75,000. I think we've lost about 20,000 of that, but they need to be coming back. You've got airports, you've got, uh, we could go back to the steamships, well, if not the steamships, ferry boats, vessels, playgrounds, sailing, canoeing, kayaking, all that stuff. How fabulous is that? Are there any phone-ins on the radio just now, Scotty? Says Andrew McKay. Very, 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 very few, and uh, they're pretty neutral, uh, I have to say. They've been neutralised by the industry because... The radio industry doesn't understand the great pool. Why is Scotty McClure still so popular 25 years on? Because I have a huge youth following. And as I say, I always remember speaking at a conference and the head of Radio 1 turned up to hear Scotty McClure and I thought, what's he coming to hear an old guy in a bonnet? And then I realised because I had such a massive youth following. I mean, 15 plus audience, 15 plus hundreds of thousands of young people right into listening to Scotty McClue. And it's still the same now that we're back on Facebook Live. Huge, huge audience of young people. Even Scotty just joined. Always a pleasure, says Paul Sefton. Welcome, 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 Paul Sefton. Lovely to have you with us. I love it, Scotty, says Peter Ewing. I love it too, Peter Ewing, because the people are getting a good dose of chat. And that's what everyone needs. So phone-ins on the radio. No, they've lost a lot of the art of that. And it's madness, really, because technology has moved at such a rate that if we open this show up to mobile phones, woo, absolutely through the roof. But I'm just on my Todd, so we need to actually work out how we're going to do it. The, one of the big mobile phone companies picks up the Scotty McClure show. Bingo. There you go. You guys are in business. Um, Scotty, how long do you think it'll be before another independence referendum? Considering Scotland seems to have had no new powers that the UK Prime Minister promised us all. I think your problem is, particularly a Conservative government, are very worried about Scotland hanging on to its money. You see, if you look back in Scotland, right? Let's even just go back to the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, the 50s. And... When you uh, bought something locally in a Scottish town or village, you got it from the local shops. They also shopped in the other local shops. They drank in the local pubs. They bought their houses at the local uh, estate agents, local lawyers, all that sort of stuff. You So you had a micro economy in every town and village and city in Scotland, right? Now, now what you've got is uh, corporate businesses the money's with the corporates you also had a lot of moneyed individuals you don't have the same moneyed individuals so the money is with the corporates so you go to the local supermarket that will be owned either in in london or uh, perhaps even accounts in uh, the british virgin isles or grand canary or somewhere like that right somewhere else altogether or uh, Liechtenstein or switzerland or wherever they could account anywhere, but the one thing, sure, they'll take your money and take it 
out of Scotland. So the Scots are being drained all the time, right? That's what's going on. We need to get that money back in Scotland and say, if you have a business operating in Scotland, you must account in Scotland, all right? That's what the Scottish government need to do. They need to be bold. They need to take big steps. Paint with broad brush strokes, like Scotty McClue does. That's what's needed. Good evening, Scotty Dinky Doo. Good evening to you. Let's keep this moving, guys. Voting is rigged, so eventually, Scotty, will be down to blockchain technology. Uh, there you go. Scotty, get your Skype on. We miss the call, says Dina the Doug. Um, I can hear you now. Um, can you start again from the start, says Ian Walker. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, what are we doing for time? Oh, my goodness. We're right at share point two. Guys, share, 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 share. As quick as you possibly can, right now. Get sharing internationally. Very, very important. Uh, one hour isn't enough, Scotty. And um, milk and two, says Steve Collington. Yes, absolutely. Milk and two, McClure is here. Ooh. Oh, it's lush. It's lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. You can't beat a wee cup of tea. Just excuse me one second. There we are. Another little um, mop down. Whoa. Roasting hot. Um, I think I shouldn't shower before the programme. I think I have to have to sort that out. Um, I'm there, but uh, I don't want to. I don't want to sit here not smelling pleasant in front of you lot. You see. Uh, so there you go. I think I'll be carrying a woman next month, uh, so I can sit down for a wee. Says Dina the Doug. Well, it's absolutely doable. Friend of mine uh, was a gentleman, became a lady, and uh, is a very, very delightful lady, and, uh, and a very famous lady. So there you go. So you can do what you like, Dean of the Doug. Uh, Scotty, just a quick hello from Molly Malone's in Puerto Rico, uh, in Puerto Rico, Gran Canaria, says George. How fantastic is that? They're watching Scotty McClure in Gran Canaria. I love it from Molly Malone's. Is the Doug still in bed, says Michael McWiggan. I know he had a long lie. So there we are. I came out through this morning. Too much information, I know. Back to bed, and the dog had managed to get himself up to bed and onto the bed and was having a kip. So there you go. You'll see he's just made himself a wee bed there. Scotty, your perspiring son. I know it's roasting hot here in Machair. Absolutely roasting. Sorry I'm late, Scotty. Can you start again? Says John Rogers. Everything's late. Naughty, naughty, naughty. You need to be there at 10 o'clock sharp. Now, guys, serious, serious point, right? A little bit of housekeeping. Do you want the program at this time? Would you like the program? Because this is program number 52. All right? We've done 52 live programs of Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live right and the facebook live model they want money to advertise the program to get it out there this is why i appeal to you at gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue you'll see all this on the scotty mcclue website or paypal me if you've got a spare couple of quid or a fiver the reason you think oh you old fool pay it yourself scotty you pay it yourself you've got more than us no 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 that's not what i'm saying that's not the philosophy if everybody sticks in a couple of quid or a fiver then it becomes that we can afford to up the ante a bit do you see where i'm coming from so if everybody does it say for instance like we had um 15 000 watching a couple of weeks ago right Fifteen thousand. if they'd sent a fiver that's seven and a half grand we can then start to up the ante get a bit of advertising going improve the equipment etc etc that's where i'm coming from so don't listen to the negative people say no 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 scotty wouldn't be asking for this if he didn't have it worked out uh, would you like uh, the program earlier in the day just a thought scotty when i go to the highlands for a break it's not owned mostly by scots it's english hosts um just to show you scotland is better so there you are well of course because the Scots are a bit slow at singing their own song these days. They've been cowed over the last 310 years, and they need to get their mojo back and start doing serious business. Uh, Scots are very, very clever, very, very highly educated. You know, the state school system in any of the towns and villages, fantastic. So there you go. Hi, Scotty, dinky-doo. If I put my money in, I'd want a job. 
Um, I'd have to work around it. My mail. I don't know what he's actually saying. Scotty, was that a Bible behind you or a book? Uh, you know your butterflies. Or was it the Koran, says Ian Walker? There could be everything. I've got, um, you know, thousands of books. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, they're not quite in fashion, but still something lovely about holding a book and learning from it. Knowledge and understanding. Please do not criticize the NHS. We have a great system providing. Uh, you do abuse it. I think you mean you don't abuse it, Jim McMillan. Yes, no, the NHS, I'm not being critical of the NHS at all. I'm just saying that it's evolved in the last 70 years. We've had the NHS for 70 years. Now, there are elements of the present administration who would like to flog off bits of the NHS and make some money. But we saw that with Mrs. Thatcher. That's why we're in the deep shecht we're in now, because of Mrs. Thatcher asset stripping the country, right? So she could have jammed today. We need to be curatorial in our views, right? That's why I'm not a multi-million heir, because I've never had that level of greed or that level of necessity, because I know that we have a finite life. So if we can get by, that's great. That's what we're looking at. Uh, John Donnelly, cannabis plants is John Donnelly. Um, what about them, John Donnelly? Uh, so there we go. Scotty, better pull down the flaps in your bonnet. There's a hurricane on the way. You know, Ian Walker, it's amazing. It's roasting hot, not just in the studio, but outside it's roasting hot at the moment. And there's not a breath of air. Not one of the leaves at McClue Towers is wavering in the wind. Amazing. Uh, Scotty, give me a word with seven letters that has no vowels. A word with seven letters that has no vowels. I would need to put pen to paper and take a moment or two. I can't just give you one off the top of my head, to be quite honest with you. Scotty, you're coming through loud and clear from sunny Twecker, says John Rogers. Do you know, I remember having a lovely bowl of soup in Twecker. So there you are, out the Kirk and Dulloch way. Now, I take it Twecker was mining. Am I correct in that? More info, please. Uh, so they are. Hey, Scotty, says Louise Sullivan. Hello, Louise. Dinky do. I hope all's going well with you. Uh, Scotty, uh, What one hour isn't enough, Scotty, says Neil James Mills. Well, no, I think it might be enough for the people. It's a long time to sit and uh, take a swatch at my coupon. That's what I say. Me and Alfred were on the bus for you, Scotty. It was freezing coming home. Well, Sandy, remember you're going out to East Lothian. East Lothian is a very cold part of the world but a very beautiful part of the world you're one of the luckiest men under the sun remember i stayed out there out at the sultans use a wee tune in the box scotty says mccair bevel i may do that so there you are do you follow a football team scotty says ben fasakali i follow lots of football teams ben you will see that in my posts i try to include everyone's team if i've missed them out do let me know I usually put in Rangers, Celtic, Hearts, Hibs, Newcastle United, I put in Liverpool, I put in Everton, I put in Leeds United, I put in Arsenal, uh, I put in uh, Aston Villa, I put in Birmingham City, um, I put in Chelsea, I put in Crystal Palace, I put in Leicester City, I put in Preston North End, Blackpool, the Saints, the Ton, the Morton, um, who else have got the St. Johnston, uh, who else do I put in, the Plymouth Argyle, so you'll see them there, and then of course uh, we've got uh, Sunderland, Sunderland up there, and uh, Hartlepool, Hull, Hull, I put Hull in, so there you go, uh, all that good stuff, uh, but if I've missed anybody out, then do let me know, and we'll see who we can put in for you. All right, very, very important. That's not even going for the junior teams as well. Clyde Bank, right? Ah, the bankies, excellent stuff. Best film ever filmed in Greenwich, just a boys game. Um, so there we are. Murray says to his wife, get me ready, you, says Ian Walker. Well, the wonderful films. I mean, what about Down Where the Buffalo Go? That was a tremendous film. And what about Leaving, set in Greenock in the 60s? Right, Danny Boyle's film, Leaving, set in Greenock in the 60s, and I think it went out in the 80s. The wonderful Paul Young as one of the schoolmasters, Jerry Slevin as the headmaster. I am appalled 
So there we are. That's up stuff. Brilliant. So there you are. Uh, Louise Sullivan. Uh, and then there's wonderful, there's a wonderful rendition of um um da da di 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 there we are um a highland welcome to you scotty from a true highlander staying in the central belt says frank crombie excellent yes i used to love your coats frank uh good evening scotty says andy hughes because too much swearing on the phone calls says louise sullivan yes we did we took the phone calls and there was swearing swearing i see shocking i don't actually like swearing on social media uh, you'll maybe get a wee tune in the box there's never been a decent honest phone in since you left scotty legend says paul sefton the jag scotty yes the party thistle fantastic stuff very very important so there you are i said to the policeman how to get to fur hill he said if you follow the crowd ended up in the supermarket uh, now uh, natural alternative medicine can be more effective in some cases eastern medicine as opposed to a lot of synthetic western medicine a lot of modern medicine has been copied from the ancient eastern seymour kerry i don't want to risk clicking seymour because i could lose the broadcast i just have to check how we are for time my goodness me doesn't time fly when you're enjoying yourself if you've just joined us a very warm welcome folks you're watching scotty mcclue the world's top broadcaster the first lord of the internet and the cultural and creative ambassador for the united kingdom of great britain and northern ireland and all our dominions and crown colonies beyond the seas so there we are i watched you on youtube today with the wonderful barbara dixon scotty yes with Barbara Dixon, we had uh, Daniel O'Donnell on the program, the wonderful Daniel O'Donnell, of course. Nicky Campbell was hosting the program. Uh, we had Scotty McClue. We had uh, Rona Cameron, the comedian. So you'll see all that there. Excellent stuff. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue broadcasting live just for you, Dinky Doo, on Facebook Live on a Sunday evening at 10 o'clock sharp for one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment. If you can do me a great favor and share everything throughout the week, just randomly see something with Scotty McClue on it, share it, follow me on Twitter, at Scotty McClue. Get yourself onto Twitter, very, very important. Get yourself onto Periscope, follow me on Periscope, all that stuff as well. We did a breakfast show uh, last week. Did you like the breakfast show? Did it on Monday morning at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. Tell us what you think about that just after 7. So there we are. Yes, you're quite right about Eastern Medicine. Um, it's fabulous stuff. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. This is Pete Gallagher, Scotty. Due to circumstances, unfortunately, I no longer live in Scotland. Being an expat, I was denied a vote in independence in 2014. In the event of another, do you think expats should be able to have the vote? Yes, I think everybody should be able to have the vote. But uh, I also think that um, they should really, you know, they were talking about uh, at the Conservative conference, we want to see Indiref off the table. And my view on that is, well, grant Scotland independence. Do it now, and uh, then you'll see Indiref off the table. So they are. Plus, it's very interesting. Does the Secretary of State for Scotland represent Scotland's interests at Westminster? or Westminster's interests in Scotland. It's an interesting one, that. A moot point, the appointment of Secretary of State for Scotland. Because I can remember when uh, the late Willie Ross, marvellous man, whether he agreed with his views or not, and he was, I think, I think Willie was actually pro-union. And um, Willie Ross went down during the January 1968 hurricane that ripped the roofs off all the tenements in Scotland. People lost their lives in it. And he said to Westminster, could he give money to repair Scotland? And they went, no. Oh, now, if that's not a reason for independence, what is? So there you are. To run the new welfare powers is going to cost nearly one billion, says Sandy Howden. Well, remember, Sandy, if we're not subsidising the rest of the UK, we'll be saving 40 billion. So we can run anything we like. Uh, so there you are, exit stuff. Uh, Scotty, what are your views on cryptocurrencies, says Peter Walsh. Peter, tell me more. Are you talking about Bitcoin and and uh, stuff like that, different 
different currencies when you say cryptocurrencies. Is that what you mean? A Scotty and American asked, what are the Scottish customs? When she comes to visit, it made me think, jumping out of a taxi without paying, skipping the train, scalp your wings. <laughs> All wrong, of course, Ian, and could get you into the slammer. So there we are. There's an awfully strong wind out there. There's been an offer in the beans in Scotland. Do you know the dug? Well, I remember being asked, there was a couple sharing a big plate of beans in a cafe uh, one day. And, um, you know, somebody said, what age are they? And, and uh, I, I didn't know. And somebody else said, well, she's 40 and he's 42. So there you go. Interesting. Another Patsy Lol says Scott Beadle. Take your bonnet off then, Scotty says McHare. What for McHare? So there you are. There's my bonnet off. Oh, a bit of the bald peat. Yes, well, there you are. That's what you get. You did ask. Um, we must have the heating on constantly. You must have the heating on constantly because you're loaded. The heating doesn't go on in my house. Well, the latest has been 29th of November. But this year, I'm going to see if I can actually beat that. So there you go. 29th of November. Uh, Dinky do 52, says Ian Walker. Yes, this is program 52, guys. So get sharing and sharing and sharing. Can we all share now? It's uh, another share point up. They're coming very, very quickly. And that's come up now. Can everybody share the program? And also, can you right click on my page at the top? Send it round and say, I'm watching Scotty McClue, Dinky do right new. Adam N. Fuller, hey, Scotty, give us a seven letter word with no vowels. I was asked that earlier, Adam. What I would need to do is actually work that one out. I don't have one uh, in front of me. So there's no heating on Robert Bain, and there won't be till the 29th of November, but we may be able to surpass that. And I would say to everybody, never take a risk, all right? Don't take uh, risk being cold, especially if you're elderly or if you don't keep well. But if you keep well and you're uh, of Scotty McClure's height and weight, Right? I'm not actually overweight, just a little under height. If I was 12 foot 6, I'd be spot on. Uh, so there we are. Then uh, think about, can you save on the heating and then you're not paying your money to the greedy companies? Uh, although I heard Nicholas Sturgeon say they were talking about setting up a state-owned company that would pass on gas and electricity at cost price. I like that. We love it. Scotland has never been so well run as it has in the last 10 years. Whether you're a political animal or not, and I'm of course not, you've got to say that the Scottish Government has done a fantastic job. Uh, this show should start 9.30 to midnight, says Andrew Mackay. Now, Andrew, I've got a serious question for everybody. Would you like to see the show on earlier? Do you want it in the morning at 11 o'clock? Um, do you want it three o'clock in the afternoon? I noticed Nigel Farage was doing a live talk show this morning. So there you are. So, uh, and I forwarded it. Louise Sullivan, 52. Well done, Scotty. Yes, indeed. And as I say, uh, you know, I think that uh, the numbers are down because Facebook like you to pay. Um, so it would help if you could all send me a bit of money. Go to Scotty McClue's website, www.scotty-mcclue.com. scotty hyphen mcclue.com at the top you'll see the two logos one for paypal and one for gofundme if you can spare a fiver stick it in that would be great just grab your card and you will be thanked excellent stuff it explains all about it on the gofundme site uh, if i put money in i want a job says robert bain i'd have to work it around my male stripper job of course robert bain yes too much information there we are. You will have whetted nobody's attitude with that. Earlier, please, says Billy Dilworth. Billy, what do you mean by earlier? Do you want it at 11 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday? Alfred James Wright. Scotty, do you prefer linked sausage or lawn sausage? I tend to have the lawn sausage, uh, Alfred James Wright. Uh, I quite like the square slice and with a couple of eggs. And if you're not taking the carbs, you can actually lose weight with it. I did go on a high-fat diet, frying the lawn sausage and the eggs in um, dripping, and I lost two stone. So there we are. But don't try that uh, until uh, you've looked into it. Learn to count, Scotty. 15,000 listeners by a fiver is uh, 75,000. Good for you, Sandy. Yes, but remember, I'm broadcasting live at the time. So if I have made an error 
All I can do is apologize in French, je m'excuse, in Italian, scusi. Uh, pardon me, uh, much in the pot, Scotty? Yeah, I think there's about uh, 460 in the GoFundMe and quite a bit on the PayPal. But uh, we are looking for around 50 grand. Also, would you like Scotty McClure to deliver a Scottish news at six? I was thinking this week, would the uh, British Bottom Cream be better delivering their local program at six o'clock and national news at 6.30 for Scotland. You tell me what you think. There we are. Uh, get on right now and tell us. Um, dig in. Come on, you lot. Dig in, says Dino the Doug. Put a few quid in Scotty's GoFundMe appeal. Uh, there were no flies used in this appeal. Absolutely. And nobody was, uh, no flies were hurt in the appeal. And Dino the Doug, you have been extremely generous. I say thank you, thank you, thank you to Dino the Doug for putting his hand in his pocket. And he's a man that, um, like myself, he might not have a lot of money, but he's one of the richest men in the world. Uh, the Tories, at their best, says Jim McMullen. They were Saturday night like the old days. We never did Saturday nights. We did um, Friday nights. So there we are. And everybody used to get their fish supper and listen to Scotty McClue for three hours of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment on Scott FM, which was Scotland's finest radio hour so there you are marvelous stuff the Tories at their best Jim McMillan I have to correct your spelling I'll put SP beside you there T-H-E-I-R for that one you've been well educated so you know the score and um, there we are uh, Adam M Fuller hi Scotty give me the word with seven letters that has no vowels you've asked that already your viewing numbers are getting lower every week. James Fitton, they're going up and up and up and up. Don't be fooled by the wee number at the top of the screen because what you'll find a couple of weeks ago, 15,000 saw that. Then we're on to 125,000 on Twitter. And then, of course, it goes on YouTube and it goes up and up and up. Also, what you can, we don't know if the numbers are regulated a bit because we're not paying. Do you see what I mean? If you look at the Facebook business model, they invite you to pay and then they'll increase the numbers for you. Do you see how it works? But I think on a business model, it might be an idea for serious corporate sponsors to talk to me, talk to Scotty McClue and see what we can do about this because we could get them great coverage. If you imagine me talking up someone's business. So if I go get yourself down to McWackle's garage and they're offering tires, from five pounds, right? So if I were to do that and give out the details, woof, their footfall goes through the roof. Also, if you're thinking in advertising your business, think about me doing the voiceover. I hear one or two voiceovers on television commercials and I think totally unsuited to that product. So there you are. So uh, totally unsuited to the product. Scotty McClue, it would have been better getting him to do that advert and I could do the voiceovers and I could appear in the advert or give them advice. If I don't catch the Sunday night show, then I catch up on YouTube. Absolutely. So the numbers are huge. So uh, James Fitton, you don't know what you're talking about, sunshine. NHS is abused by druggies, hypochondriacs and the plain stupid, says Robert Bain. Yes, but any of us could have an emergency. You might get your chanty stuck in your heat. And have to go to E and E to get them to take it off. They might have to call the fire brigade to take the chanty off your head. So, uh, you know, don't be knocking it, Robert. Ron Stewart shared. Absolutely. I'll never forget the day I read a book that was contagious. 70 pages there, pictures here and there. And it wasn't hard to bear the day I read a book, says Ian Walker. I thought you were quite well read, Ian Walker. You're obviously trying to be funny. Rhythms, says Adam M. Fuller. Rhythms, algorithms are you talking about? Hearing you loud and clear from the bottom of the mine in Clandudno, says Ian Walker. Dinky do to call all of you there in Clandudno. Marvellous stuff. Scott Reed uh, mentions something. What I'll do with you, Scott, I will ban you because we don't like unpleasant language. So Scott Reed, uh, delete comment, and uh, that's him gone. If he goes back on, Steve Collington says, Clyde Bank. Um, Sorry, Scotty, I need to head to my bed, mate. Work tomorrow, mate, says Jim McMullen. Well, we've all got work tomorrow, Jim. 
very, very busy. Scotty McClure's maxed, but he can still manage to broadcast. Uh, Louise Sullivan has a great radio show, Scotty, on Black Diamonds and Sandy Howden. I know, Sandy, I've um, put my voice on it for her. Just one cornetto, says Pete Gallagher. Just one cornetto. Uh, fabulous stuff. A uh, hey, up from Hull, says Gary Duncan. A hey, hey, up to Hull. And uh, good luck, love, with your city of culture. That's what I say. Aye, you get across that umber bridge there. Uh, get yourself into Cleethorpes. Uh, I'm going to interview the lovely Owen Paul on my show last night. Going to find, going to fund Scotty McClue. Hope it works this time, says Louise Sullivan. Did you do? Thank you, Louise. That would be very kind of you. Ron Sharp, classic. Ochen Lake Talbo, says Ron Stewart. Dinky you do? The Jags, Scotty. Come on, the Jags. Everywhere we go, people want to know. There we are. Who we are, who are we? Do you remember that? And do you remember uh, McClure was called the Jaggy Bunnet by uh, another radio station when their business was going to the pan because Scott FM had become all-powerful and they had to remove Scotty McClure from it. So they are so the other radio stations didn't get damaged. Uh, so the Jags, fantastic. Karat Limi, hi. Hi, Karat, lovely to hear from you. The seven letter word with no vowels. Come on, which one is it? Is rhythms. Oh, I see, I thought you were talking rhythms as in algorithms for the numbers. Hey, it's an ordeal Brexit. We'd all be better mucking out Geordie's buyer. Yes, I think the Brexit thing has been kicked into the long grass. They will be using all sorts of positive and pro-Brexit language, but it will end up either not at all or in name only. So there you are. That's what I'm talking about. Ochen Lake Talbo. Yes, Talbo or Talbot. If you want a woman as a leader in Scotland. So there we are. So marvellous Alfred James Wright. There you are. Um, Scotty. The thing is, all Glasgow folk want a hurricane, the biggest jet, the power of nature on your doorstep. We should have our own wind farms in. Uh, how are we doing for time, guys? We must be tight for time. Heavens above, we've only got two minutes. So there you are, dinner the dog. Mr. Martin is standing in his grave, Scotty. It's because he can't get a Wi-Fi signal six feet under. Nathan Lightfoot says, so... Uh, Erica Meyer, good morning, Scotty from Australia. How are you, Erica? Good morning to you, my dear fellow. Lovely to have you with us. We're broadcasting in Australia, guys, in Canada, in America, in India, Africa, right across New Zealand. Yes, put them on earlier, says Kevin Wibley. So there you are. Time for Bobo, Scotty. Night, night. Two shows a day, says Ste. Yeah, why not Ste? Amazing stuff. Uh, no show in the morning. Keep to the night, please, but a bit longer. On an extra hour on a Friday, says Kerry Duncan. Uh, so there we are. Uh, 9 p.m., says Pete Gallagher. Right, guys, we've done show 52, and we've been a bit more than that. We've probably done about maybe 54 shows, 55 shows, because, of course, I was broadcasting from a secret location over the summer period, and we did a couple of shows there. Uh, come on, give Scotty a pound, says Ron Stewart. Uh, the seven-letter word with no vowels is rhythm. Yes, we know that, Adam. We got that. I meant Friday, says Ian Walker. Um, so there you are. Rhythms, yes, we've said that. Come on, you guys, give Scotty a pound. Fantastic. I'll sponsor you, says Steve Collington. I think we should be looking at genuine corporate and business sponsorship for the Scotty McClure Show, because this is massive, absolutely massive. Jump on the bandwagon, guys. I promise you. So there we are. You could you could sell Kunsol, Scotty. You could sell the Kunsol, Johnny Emily. So there you are. You're still alive and talking, big man. Says the Gov. We are the Gov. Dinky do to you. I hope you are well and still alive and talking yourself. You top man. Uh, Scotty, the new universal credit is akin to 1940. And uh, so there we are. When everybody had to register at the Gestapo. Uh, so there you are, the, the, the German state police. Kerry Duncan, when you're talking about the NHS, Scotty, some people go to A&E &E as the doctors are more helpful than their GPs. I think that's fair stuff. Um, give no, says William 
Harriet. Yes, give yes, William Harriet. I think the Tories will make unemployed ghettos, then transportation to the afterlife. Uh, do you know the Doug? My master's challenge, as if someone put a tenor to your GoFundMe page, then he will match it from his gyroscotty. What an umpty head, says Dino the Doug. Fantastic. Guys, we are out of time. What a wonderful, wonderful programme tonight. Thank you so much. Follow me on LinkedIn. Go to Scotty McClure YouTube channel. Put that into Google. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Periscope. Follow me on all the Facebook pages. Scotty McClure, Dinky Doo, The World's Top Talk Show. Scotty McClure's page. Scotty McClure's operative page. Follow me on there. We're now on Instagram. Scotty McClure 1. Get on to Instagram to Scotty McClure 1. I'll probably pop up on Periscope in a few minutes and do a Periscope for you. So come and join me there and share, share, share during the week. 52 programs just for your edification and delight. Not bad. This is Scotty McClure saying to every single one of you, take great care of yourselves. Thanks for watching and dinky doo. I'll sing you the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of Wheater Zane. Au revoir and a cheery o. Dinky-doo, my darlings. Take care. Scotty McClue has left the building.